Hi, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. Let's talk about mountain weather and ski conditions. And we've got a great week coming up after an amazing week. Last weekend, even this weekend, was outstanding at some of the resorts with all the powder we had driven by that big atmospheric river setup. Well, this week, we've got a few things to talk about. First of all, live camera. Loveland Ski Area, great day to be up there. Yesterday was good, too, but 9 inches in 24 hours up at Loveland here in uh, Colorado. Look at those blue skies. Isn't that awesome? And there's definitely snow on the way for Loveland, uh, Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, the West Coast. I mean, we're going to see it. In fact, to hear some of my headlines, it's going to be a two-storm cycle this week, and it will last all the way through the end of the week into the weekend as that second storm comes into the Intermountain West. And there's a tiny river component to this. It is nowhere near like what we saw in California last week, but there's a tiny river component to this, and I'll show you that. And then the final piece of this two-storm cycle will be a northwest flow component, and that usually delivers big across the Intermountain West, and it will leave us much, much colder by late in the week and into the weekend. So we'll talk about all of that and how it all plays out. Let me take you into the analysis here. Start with radar and satellite. So there it is. You can see the, uh, uh, the first low in what's going to be a two-storm cycle moving into the West Coast. That's going to lay down heavy precip up in the Pacific Northwest. So take a look at the green. I'm looking at the green ribbons. This is uh, precipitable water in the atmosphere. Wait for this thing to come back at us here in the original frame. But uh, watch the green in the first frame. It's going to take a second for this to come back. But it reaches, it's reaching, there it is. You see it right there. You see that ribbon extending all the way back into the Pacific. That is just a little tiny piece of a river that extends kind of like the Pineapple Express, a very low end piece of that extending up to the Pacific Northwest. And then it's going to roll down with that storm system across the West Coast and fuel some heavy snow from the Pacific Northwest into the northern Sierra, the Northern California Sierra. I'll show you that uh, here in just a little bit. All right, so let's look at the jet stream. This is uh, always very important to see where the big ore graphics are going to set up. And look at this powerful jet stream cruising in to California, slamming up against the Sierra Tuesday into Wednesday. That'll fuel some of those bigger totals in Northern California, kind of like Tahoe North this time. Also, look at what's changing. You see this hitting the Pacific Northwest? That's a change in the jet stream orientation. Notice on the south side, it's coming in from the southwest. Now we're looking at it from the northwest. Big change right there, and that's why we're looking at a two-storm cycle. Put this into the future just a little bit more. We'll cruise into Thursday and Friday, and notice how that northwest flow will become dominant as we work our way into Thursday and Friday. Yes, there's a big storm that comes in Wednesday and Thursday in the Intermountain West, but it will be followed on the heels by this, which is going to be this northwest flow component. You can see it taking shape right there. I mean, this is going to lay down some very heavy snow through parts of Idaho and also into the Tetons and also into the Wasatch with these two different storm systems. And eventually that will translate into Colorado as well. And here it is. By Friday, we're talking about a big northwest flow pattern that will be establishing itself across the West. And this is going to, this is what will deliver those big totals and the colder air that will run in uh, very quickly behind it. I mean, we're gonna be talking about big drops in temperatures in the atmosphere, which will help to fuel all this all the way into the weekend. And look at that, you know, in Colorado, we just love to see this. I-70 and North, this can be a, uh, a big uh, deliverer. Let's look at the future uh, radar here. By the time we get into Monday morning, yeah, we've got heavy snow falling up there into the Pacific Northwest, and it's actually going to run all the way into Banff, that western, that western aspect of Banff, over into Sun or into Revelstoke, especially into that area. Watch the load drop down into the Sierra here. By the time we get to Tuesday and the Wednesday, it's again not as impressive, not even close to what we saw last week, but it does lay down some heavier totals, uh, Tahoe North into Shasta. And look what's happening here. By the time we get into Wednesday, we are definitely talking about some snow here um, through the Tetons and even down into the Wasatch. I think the Wasatch is an interesting place to watch with this first storm as well between Wednesday and also Thursday. We'll see how much snow we can squeeze out with this first storm in the Wasatch. It could be impressive. Uh, so that's Wednesday, and as we march ourselves into Thursday, that whole thing will then work its way through Colorado. 
that's the first storm. Now on the heels of it, watch the second part of this take shape as the jet barrels in from the northwest. It will start to deliver colder and colder air and all those areas that do well with this type of flow by Thursday, Friday, and even Saturday will continue to pile up big numbers and look at this flow pattern straight out of the northwest taking shape into Colorado. This is really exciting. When you see this, I mean, this can lay down some seriously heavy snowfall totals um, between Thursday, Friday, and Saturday across the west. Okay, so let's look at this. An early look at this. We'll do this in phases. By Monday, it's all Pacific Northwest into Revelstoke and Marmot Basin and Sunshine Village uh, as we work our way into Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday, uh, you've got Mount Shasta there starting to pick up the big numbers. Watch Rainier's numbers continue to just skyrocket up. Whistle Blackcomb, it's going to be a good stretch too. If you can stay at the highest of elevations up there in the Pacific Northwest with this rich flow. Then we start to see that, that low come out of California. Between Wednesday and Thursday, watch Jackson Hole, the Wasatch, and the central and northern mountains of Colorado begin to tick up between Wednesday and also into the day on Thursday. All right, so let's move this into Thursday, and there it is. You can see the numbers really start to uh, tick up. Look at those numbers in Colorado. It is going to be a big powder day in the mountains of Colorado on Thursday. And as we hit Friday, the northwest flow will start to really pump the numbers up um, through parts of Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, and Utah. So as we work this into Friday morning, look at Jackson. All of a sudden, you've got two feet. You're working on two feet. Big Sky, Bridger, Discovery, Schweitzer, uh, Alta, Snowbird, it's going to be big. And then the numbers through Friday night in Colorado will all continue to go up very quickly. What we're doing here is it's going to be uh, a powder into the week across the Intermountain West in Utah, in Wyoming, in parts of Montana and Idaho. And certainly that is going to be the case into Colorado as we work our way into the weekend. I mean, look at the numbers there. This is just an early look. Some of these are going to be conservative. I think a lot of the totals will exceed what I'm showing here. So this will be another big week, and I'll keep things updated right here. Always appreciate you tuning in here. I hope you have a great end to the weekend.